Look here, folks. Golly. What have we got right here? What in the world have we got? Let me loosen off on the drag. <clears throat> he won't quit. I'm just going to wear him down. This is a good quality fish right here. Wow. Healthy. Healthy. Big old fish. Y'all look right there. Okay. That's what I'm talking about right there. No, 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 no. Uh, well, I ain't, that ain't what he's talking about, though. Okay, Phil, come on over here. We'll get him. Looky there. My, 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 my. Boy, 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 that was a pretty fish. And I probably caught 20 to 25 others just like it. I'm going to show y'all what I caught this fish on. These are the HD high definition crawls. This particular color right here is called the Golden Crawl. This is the color right here that I killed some fish on. The next color that I bought is Dark Green Pumpkin right there. Both of these are similar in color to the, to the color of crawfish that we have in this area. Here's one out of the pack. If y'all can see how realistic this crawfish is. When I seen them, well, I had to get some. But I did doctor this crawfish up. Here in North Alabama, our crawfish has orange. Now this is Spike It Dip and Glow, um, the original scented crawfish, which is nothing but orange. But this is accurate. After I dipped this crawfish up to look like what we have here in North Alabama. And that's very, very close, very close. And I believe that's why I caught so many fish with this particular bait. The closer you can get the color right when it comes to a crawfish in the creek that they inhabit, the more fish you're gonna catch. That, that's, just, that's just a given, folks. Now, the way I rigged this bait is like this. That, this is an eight pound test floor carbon leader right here. That's a loop knot. This is a 1 20th of an ounce Z-Man mushroom head. And we're gonna be using far as tackle, a light action rod, six and a half foot, light action sow belly rod, light as a feather, a Garcia Revo spinning reel. This is a 2000 size reel, seven, six and one gear ratio extremely quick with 10 pound test frost braid and that's it and i have a leader on here about eight feet i'm working this bait real slow yeah the water's getting a lot deeper here that's what we're looking for but with all the movement in the pinchers and the legs and the way this bait stands up there's no need to overwork the bait see it's on the bottom right now so I want the pinchers and the legs and all that to move, to just burn every time I, so I'm just gonna move it like that and then to let it stay there. And then slide it just a little bit on the bottom, just slide it. See, I'm wanting it to look just as natural as possible. And then, and then slide it. That's basically how I'm gonna work this bait, folks just like that that's going to get the strikes when you're talking about crawfish uh, imitate imitation crawfish that's the way i like to work them the original shroom z-man heads this is a 120th of an ounce like i told y'all i'm using it because i know i can remember that this creek didn't have much current at all. There, there's quite a bit, but not much. And a 1 20th of an ounce is perfect for in here. There's a turtle that come up. It's not too heavy. 
and it's not too light. See, I'm fishing in about waist deep water right now. So that's perfect. One of the things that I do that I feel like it's important is to fish with the lightest weight that you possibly can, no matter what kind of artificial you're using. I get far more bites like that, personally, just my opinion. But we're just going to mess around here. There's fish right there. Now watch this. See that hook set? All I done was lean into the fish. Now this is a small one, but it is a spotted bass. Just lean into the fish. That was the point I was getting at. A lot of people says these hooks bend out easy. Well, they don't do it. They're not designed, these hooks are not designed for a hard hook set. They're so sharp, all you gotta do is lean into the fish and you'll hook them every time. And you won't bend the hook out. A lot of people says, oh, I lose too many fish on that particular jig head. <laughs> Come on, man. Just lean, don't try to knock his head off. But that one right there is kind of small. But it's a spotty bass. Alabama spotty bass. Okay, let's get him off right here. I brought me some forceps right here because I don't want to damage my bait. And I'm going to grab the hook. Not the plastic, but the hook. There we go. Well, that's number one. About a 13 inch fish, maybe. Let's let him go. There he goes. That water's not real clear. All right, folks, let's walk right over here just for a second. Let's look at this bait in the water. There we go. Now look at this. Y'all see that? That is super realistic. Mm-hmm. There he is. Watch this, folks. See, I just leaned into the fish. Let's see how big he is. I don't think he's real big. But he ain't bad. They're strong, strong in these crates. But that that's the problem. That's why these hooks are bending out. and I rarely ever lose a fish on this particular jig head. And also keeping that drag light enough where to slip easy. That'll keep that hook from bending out. You see. That's a good spotty bass right here. He's starting to really cut up the fat, folks. Look here. Wow. Pretty doggone fish right here. Healthy. Come here. No, don't do it. Look at there, what a fish. That is a big old spotted bass. I mean, that's a nice one. All right, folks, that's a big or a decent spot. That spotted bass right there is close to 17 inches probably. There's some in here a lot bigger, but I want to show you something real quick. I've always talked about this, but this is going to be firsthand on the field showing y'all a fact. Woo. Let's let it go right here. I don't know if y'all going to be able to see him or not. There he goes. Well, anyway, I've muddied it up. This is the type of creek right here the, the bottom is really sandy and then a few rocks this makes for a great spotty bass creek not a very good one for smallmouth matter of fact there's no smallmouth in here but let me show y'all something okay folks look at that bait <laughs> see i glued the head it's still glued y'all have noticed that but if you'll notice something else about that bait the pinchers has been has been torn off now, when that fish hit that bait, the first one didn't do that. 
but this one, this second fish bass did. I felt a thump, thump. And then the then nothing. I didn't feel the fish. No pressure. No no fish moving with it. I moved it a couple more times and then boom, boom. no pressure. And then the third time the fish committed. Now, what happens is a lot of these spotted bass, small mouth, large mouth, they'll tear those pinchers off before they swallow the crawfish. Um this is typical. It's normal. As a matter of fact, I've fished on this channel a lot of times with live crawfish and have pointed out that to be a fact. They'll do that. Now, another thing is this bait is not made of Elastec like a Z-Man uses or is it the type of material that uh, uh, Nico makes. It's just regular plastic. Look how that bait's done. To, it's, it's ruined. Okay, what I'm going to have to do is cut this bait off, tie me another one on. Yeah, and you know, that is, that's bad. I mean, that's really bad. It's such a perfectly built bait. But that's how important the last tech is. Um, you can catch fish after fish after fish after fish without it tearing up. So I'm going to have to stop and rig me another bait up and tie it on go through the dyeing process, the gluing process, all that. Because I'm wanting to, they're hitting the bait fine. But that is why Elastec is a lot cheaper to fish with than regular plastic. I just wanted to point that out. There's fish. There we go. I can't catch up to him. I can't tell how big he is. There he is. He's a good one. Y'all see that? That fish comes straight to me. Comes straight to me. <laughs> Golly. That's a good one right here. That's one of my better fish I've caught. It just holds true. It just, and it was that way last time. It just seems like the better fish start about right here where I'm at. Come on in here, boy. Yep. That's more like it. If you'll quit, quit. Well, he'll quit. He says, I'll quit when I want to. Come here. Look at there, and that's a healthy spot. But they are some parasites or something right here on his tail. Uh, a lot of these fish is that way in here. Some of them are, some of them ain't. I don't know what, that's a healthy fish. He's been eating. Let's let him go. Go on back. You know, folks, a lot of people ask me, they say, Richard, how do you determine what you're going to fish with in these creeks? I fish in a lot of creeks, folks. I hunt them. I fish in different creeks. Some of them's anywhere from two and a half to three hours away from here. Creeks I don't know anything about. What I do is I take several different baits with me. My backpack is just full of them. Now, I'm, what I'm going to do when I get into the creek, the first thing I'm going to do, now this ain't no jive turkey stuff. This is a fact. I'm going to turn rocks over if they exist in a creek, and I'm looking for um, evidence of either crawfish or helgramites. And after I turn several, I mean, sometimes I'll do this 30 minutes, several of those rocks over like that, and if I determine, well, I believe there's more crawfish in here than helgramites, I'll, make, I'll go ahead and I'll fish with the dominant bait that's in that creek. And in this situation, I was correct. A lot of the fish that I hooked and was fighting were spitting up crawfish. So my hunch was right. I was dead on, dialed in, 
and hey man, woo, I was dialed in. I was dialed in. That old man over is crazy. He went over and he, he ain't, he's over and he's doing some stuff he ain't supposed to do. I'm gonna go over and see what I do to tell you that. A lot of times they'll stack up in areas like this. This is just a, a deep hole. You have kind of almost a show right here, and you got a show right here where I'm at. And a lot of times, if the hole's deep enough, you'll have several bass stack up in places like this. But uh, I'm going to make another cast or two. That's a small one right there. All right, so that's two in one place. Right there. So I'm going to look for similar stuff like that right there. Here's a couple shades up here if the water's deep enough. Which we'll find out right here directly. You can actually pattern these fish oftentimes in these creeks. Um, and there's a lot of different kinds that I fish. Some of them are murky like this one. Um, some of them are crystal clear. Some of them are in between. Some of them are wider than others. Some of them are narrow and deep. Some of them are uh, broad and shallow. <laughs> so there's a lot of different kinds. Two things that's going for this area right here. No, I see three. No, I see four. For one thing, the water's dropping deeper. That's one. If y'all can see, this boat, big log runs up in, up under that shade ways. That's two. Third thing is, we, we have a point. It's kind of like a point there. It juts out. Y'all see that? Okay, and the fourth thing is shade. So everything's present. Uh, actually, five. There's rocks in here. Big rocks. Okay, so there's five different things that's going for this. When you have that many things going at one time, well, there should be another fish in there. Let's make a cast. There could be several fish right here. So, look here, folks. See that? Got a crawl. Got a pincher missing. All right. So let's make another cast in there. We'll mess around and catch that fish. He pulled that pincher off. There he is. Got him that time. They tried to disarm him. He couldn't take it once I put that bait in there again. See, I put it right back in there where I missed him. Or where he grabbed that pincher. And I felt him shake it off. But he didn't eat the bait. So I reeled back up and made another cast and caught him. That's how that works. Or it is right now. That's a good fish right here. Darn good one. Strong, strong. Are you done? <laughs> okay. Got him. Look at there. Look at there, look at there. What a pretty fish now. Wow. My goodness. What a blessed day. Very blessed. Just let him go. Ooh, there we go. Oh my, my, my. This is a good one right here. This is a real good fish right here. I was walking back. Yeah, this is a good one right <laughs> Wow. I was, mm, y'all see that? 
would you give up sometime today? I tell you what, these things right here, the Alabama spotted bass, to me, fights as hard as smallmouth. Folks, they got the power. And they got the endurance. Come on. I don't even see that bait. And I set the hook quick. Yeah, I see that bait now. Y'all look here what a fish. Let me show that to y'all real quick. My goodness, what a big old spot. Healthy too. Alright folks, I want y'all to look what a fish. That is a big spot right there. A big spot. I've been catching a lot of them with stuff like that on their tail. And I can't remember if last year... Uh, if they were the same way last year or not. It may be because, you know, I really don't know. As far as I know, this creek right here, there's no way it could be polluted. It could be that these fish just have come off bed. I don't, I really don't know. But, uh, that is a big spotted bass from a creek. This ain't a river, it's a creek. Let's let him go. Well, there he goes. There he is right there. I don't know if y'all can see him or not. See him right there? He was so strong I couldn't hold him. That's how strong these, these fish are. There he goes. <laughs> Golly. I want to say God bless each and every one of y'all. Thank y'all for all the great comments. Everything y'all do for this channel, y'all done it. Hey. Whoa. <laughs> The adrilogen out here in the middle of nowhere supersedes the adrilogen that you would get in front of a bunch of people because the nature will enhance the, the y'all know what I'm talking about. Hey, man, woo. I don't need to lose these. Hey, lay it right there. Woo. And remember... Go fishing when you can, because it's good for you.